everything in the world of programming requires a name but still there are a few anonymous mysteries lambda functions or lambda expressions are one of these kind of entities that are in fact nameless so here is Vajiha from edureka to help you guys crack down on this incredible enigma of python in today's live session coming back towards the session we shall first begin with understanding what are lambda functions or lambda expressions and why they're used Following that, I'll be showing you all how to write these lambda functions along with some user defined functions as well as some predefined functions such as filter, map, and reduce. Finally, we'll be using these lambda functions to solve some algebraic expressions. So, guys, I hope everyone's ready to start with the session. Okay, so without any further ado, let's move on towards the first topic of the session, which is understanding what exactly are lambda functions. Python lambda functions are functions that do not have any name. They are also known as anonymous or nameless functions. The word lambda is a keyword that specifies what follows is anonymous. Now that you're aware of what these lambda functions are, let's move on further to see why they are actually used. The main purpose of anonymous functions comes into picture when you need some function just once. They are created wherever they are needed. Due to this reason, Python Lambda functions are known as throwaway functions. They are also used within higher order functions which take a function as an input or return it as an output. Another very good advantage of using these Lambda functions is reducing the size of code. And I'm going to be showing y'all in this session how to do this. So now let's move on towards our next topic, which is to see how to write anonymous functions. Lambda functions are created using the lambda operator and its syntax is as follows. The first thing that you'll need to specify is the lambda keyword and following that you'll have to specify the arguments or the inputs. And finally, after the colon symbol, you'll have to specify the expression that needs to be solved. Lambda expressions can take any number of arguments. So as you can see over here, my first example is a lambda expression without any arguments. In the second example, I've taken a lambda expression which just has one argument a1. Finally, I'm demonstrating a lambda expression which has inputs from a1 to an. Just remember that all your arguments or inputs need to be separated by a comma. So now let's move on towards our Jupyter notebook and see how we can actually write these lambda functions. I'll just create a new notebook over here guys. I'll just open a new notebook over here guys and I'll rename it as lambda functions. So guys, now just let me write the syntax as a comment over here. This is going to be good for a referral purpose. So first is the lambda keyword like I already told you all. Sorry guys for the spelling mistake. Lambda and the arguments followed by the expression. Okay, so the first thing I'll have to write down is the lambda keyword. Following that, I'll have to specify the arguments. So let me just give one argument to this. And after that, I'll just say I want to multiply this a with itself. So this is my lambda function. But before executing this, I'll require some variable that can hold the value of this. So I'll just specify that x is equal to this lambda function and after this I'll say x of 3 and I'll hit run. So as you can see over here when I used x of 3 it's returned the output to be 9. So guys if I had to solve the same expression using a normal function then I would have had to write a larger piece of code than this. Let me just demonstrate this to you guys over here. So I'll just define a function say new and I'll pass the parameter as a. Now I'll be using return to return the value of a star a. To call this function, I'll have to use the name of the function and specify some value to the argument that I've already passed. So in place of a, I'll pass the value as 4 or let me take it as 3 itself like the previous function and I'll hit run. As you can see over here, using lambda functions, I just required two lines of code. Whereas, while using the normal function, I had to make use of three lines of code along with this return statement over here. Okay, so guys, I hope you all have understood how to write these lambda functions. So guys, as you all have just seen, I've used lambda expressions in the example along with some other variable x. Now I did this because these functions are nameless and require some name to be called. 
but doesn't it seem confusing as to why assign a name to a nameless function and what is the need of it? It's a legitimate question guys, but the point is this is not the right way of using anonymous functions. Anonymous functions like I've already told y'all are best used within higher order functions. These functions either take a function as an input or return it as an output. To demonstrate this, let me just move on towards our next topic of this session. The first thing that we are going to study is anonymous functions within user defined functions. So as you all can see on the screen, I have a user defined function that takes the lambda function as an input. In this example over here, the normal python function which in my case is new func takes one argument x. This argument is then added to some unknown argument which is supplied through the lambda function. Let me just jump on to my Jupyter notebook to explain this in detail. Let me just first create a heading over here guys. Just remember the number of prefixed hashes tells which heading it is. So if it is h1 it will have one hash prefixed to it. If it has two then it's h2 and so on. So I'll just create a heading over here of h1 level and I'll give the name as user defined functions or lambda within user defined functions. Lambda within user defined. So I hope you guys know what are user defined functions. Okay, so as you all know, when you have to create a function in Python, you'll have to use the DEF keyword followed by the name of the function. I'll just name the function as A and I'll pass one parameter to it, say X. After that, I'll be using the return statement and within this, I'll specify a lambda function. I'll pass y as the argument to this lambda function and I'll use x plus y as my expression. Now let me just give some value to the variable x and store it in another variable t. So a of 4 and I'll, I'll print the value of t of 9 or sorry 8 and I'll hit run. So as you all can see on the screen, the lambda function that is used within the function a is called whenever I call this higher order function. And the first thing that I'm doing over here is passing a value to the variable x and then I'm printing the value of x plus y. So I hope everyone's understood this part. Okay, now let me just copy this function and pass a few other values to this as well. I'll just store a new value in the variable u and I'll pass the value for x as say 7 and I'll print u of 5. And I hit run. Okay, so I hope everyone's clear with this. If you have any doubts, please do let me know in the chat box and my team is here to help you. Now let's move on towards the next topic, which is using lambda functions within filter map and reduce functions. The filter method is used to filter the given iterables, which can either be lists, sets, etc. Now this is done with the help of another function which is passed as an argument to test all the elements to be either true or false. After applying the function to the set of iterables, if the value is true, then that value is returned in the output. Now let me just jump on to my Jupyter notebook and use the lambda function within the filter method. I'll just give a new heading over here again. Just for your reference guys, I'll create a heading of h2 level by prefixing it by two hash characters. So I'll just use lambda within filter and since this is a method like I already told you all the filter function needs iterables. Now here I'll just create a list. I'll say my list and I'll specify some elements to this. The filter method is going to check for all the elements to either be true or false in accordance to the expression that is passed within the lambda function. Like I already told y'all, the filter method is going to check if the expression that is specified within the lambda function is either true or false for all the elements that are present within my list. And it returns all the elements that satisfies the expression. So as a result, I'll have a new list. So I'll just name it as a new list. And I'll use the filter function. And within this, I'll be using the lambda function like I already told y'all. Let me just specify the input as A. And I'll give an expression over here, say A. I just want to check if any of these values when divided by 3 will equate to 2. And I'll pass my list. 
and I'll pass my list as an argument to this. And since the output is going to be a list, I'll just use the list method over here. And one more point I want you guys to note is the syntax of the filter function. And since I forgot to specify this before beginning the demonstration, let me just specify the syntax of this function over here. I'll say syntax. You'll have to use the filter keyword along with some function followed by the iterables. Okay, so as you can see over here, I have the filter keyword, I have the function which is lambda, and then I've passed my list as the iterables to this function. Now let me just print the new list and I'll hit run. Uh oh, sorry guys, I've made a spelling mistake over here. So it's F I L T E R. So as you can see over here, I've passed the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 to this filter method. And after checking if this expression is true for all the iterables, it has returned 6 as the output. Now let me just cross check over here. So if I divide 1 by 3, I will not get a result which is equal to 2. Similarly, if I divide 2 by 3, I'm not going to get the result as 2 again. Finally, as we all know, if I divide all these elements by 3, only for 6, I'll get the output as 2. So I hope everyone's clear with how to use the lambda function within the filter function. So now let's get back to our presentation and see how we can use the lambda function within the map function. Guys, the map function in Python is a function that applies a given function to all the iterables and returns a new list. So I hope you're understanding what exactly it does. It takes a function as the input and some iterables as well. And then it applies this function to the set of iterables that are passed and it returns a new list. So now let's get back to Jupyter and do the same. I'll create a new heading of course. And it's going to be lambda within map. And I hit run. So before moving on towards the demonstration, I'll just write the syntax for the map function. So it has to have the map keyword of course. And the parameters that are passed to it is a function and the iterables. Now let me just make use of the same list which I was using previously and I'll copy that over here. And then I'll just store the output in a new list P and I'll use the list function since I want the output to be a list. Within this I'll use the map function and to that map function I'll pass a lambda function as the input. I'll just pass one argument to this as A and the condition I'm going to specify is to check if any element present within my list divided by 3 is not equal to 2 and I'll pass my list as the set of iterables and then finally I'll be printing this. Now let me hit run. So as you all can see over here, it has returned a list with some boolean values. The expression that I wanted to check is a by 3 not equal to 2. Now let me just move on to my list and see what happens when I divide 1 by 3. Of course I'm not going to get 2, so I have true as the output. Now when I divide 2 by 3, again I'm not going to have the output as 2 and therefore I have true as the boolean value for this. Similarly, all the elements present in my list are divided by 3 and it's going to check if the condition is true. Therefore, only for 6 it's going to be false and I have the output as false. Okay, so I hope you guys have understood how to use the lambda function within the map function. If you have any doubts, please do let me know in the chat box guys and my team will revert to you. Okay. Now let me just jump on towards our next topic which is using lambda function within the reduce function. So guys, the reduce function is used to apply some other function that is passed as a parameter to it to a list of iterables and finally it returns a single value. And to demonstrate this, I'll just jump on to my Jupyter notebook again and I'll create a heading. This is going to be lambda within reduce and I hit run. So first let me just write the syntax of this function. It is the reduce keyword and it takes a function as a parameter. The first parameter is a function and second is a sequence. 
Now to make use of the reduce function, you'll have to import the func tools library or from that library you'll have to import the reduce function. To do this, I'll be using from func tools import reduce. You can also directly import the func tools library as import func tools or you can also use from func tools import star. These are just the alternate ways that you can also use over here. Okay, so now I'll be using the reduce function and within this I'll specify a lambda function. And I'll pass two parameters say a and b. And let me just print the sum of a and b. And finally it has to have a sequence as its input. So I'll just specify a list over here. I'll say the list of values to be 23, 56, 43, 98 and 1. Okay, so now let me hit run and see what it returns. So as you can see over here guys, I have 221 as my output. So what this reduce function is actually doing is it first adds 23 to 56. So guys, the first thing that the reduce function does is add 23 and 56. And the output of this is going to be 79. Now after adding these two values to this output, it will add 43. So to 79, it's going to add 43 and it will produce a new output. After finding the output of 79 and 48, it's going to add the result to 98. And finally, it's going to add that result with 1 and returns the final output which is 221. So I hope you guys have understood how this function is recursively adding each value to the next value that's present in the sequence. Guys, if you have any doubts, please do let me know in the chat box. Okay. Now let's move on to see how you can actually use these lambda expressions or lambda functions to solve some algebraic expressions. For this, I'll just go back to my Jupyter notebook and I'll create a heading over here. Uh oh, sorry guys. I'll just delete these two kernels. And I'll create a heading. I'll just say lambda for algebra. So guys, first we'll be taking some linear equations. So I'll just create a heading as linear equations. So as we all know, algebraic linear equations consists of variables of degree 1, which means they'll have the power as 1. So now let's just use the lambda function to solve some linear equations. I'll just say s is equal to lambda and I'll pass the argument or the input as a and the expression I'll specify as a star a and I'll use s of 4 and I hit run. So as you all can see over here 4 cross 4 is 16. Now let me take a different linear equation. So let me just write the linear equation over here as a comment. So I just want say 3x plus 4y. Okay, so if I want 3x plus 4y so I'll have to specify some name to this say D is equal to lambda and X and Y as the inputs and since I want 3 star X plus 4 star Y. Okay, I have 3 into X plus 4 into Y. Okay, and then I'll pass the values as 4 comma 7 and I'll hit run. As you all can see 40 has been returned as the output when I pass the value of x as 4 and the value of y as 7. Now let me take some quadratic equation. So I hope you all know what is a quadratic equation. It's an algebraic equation with the degree 2. Let me just give the heading as quadratic equation. Okay. So now let me just try to solve the very famous a plus b the whole square. a plus b the whole square. So I'll just say part 2 okay. 
Now let me write a lambda function that's going to return the value of a plus b the whole square. I'll just save it within a new variable x and I'll use the lambda function and the arguments or the inputs are a and b. The expression that I'm going to use is a plus b and like we all know we'll have to use double star when we use powers and then I'll print this x. I'll pass the values of a and b as 3 comma 4 and I'll hit run. Okay, so as you all can see I found the value of a plus b the whole square using the lambda expressions. So I hope you guys are clear with this. If you guys have any doubts please do let me know in the chat box and my team is here to help you. So guys with this we've reached the end of this session. I hope you've enjoyed and learned something new. In case you have any suggestions or queries please do let me know in the comment section and I will revert to you at the earliest. Goodbye and take care.